what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again and today we will continue with our bhagavad gita series from the first chapter 20 first verse we discussed the first 20 verses the first 20 shlokas and in that we saw that the different conscious from the sides of the kurus and the pandavas were blown and how the blowing of the conscious of the pandavas shattered the hearts of those in the side of the Kauravas and especially when the Kauravas saw that Arjuna's chariot had Hanumanji's standard in that he they were astonished and they were fearful and they thought as if death has come to them and this shattered the hearts of Duryodhana and his brothers Therefore, today we will start with the 22nd, uh, 21st and the 22nd verse and we will also <coughs> read ahead. And before we begin, I always make the prayer. Oma Gyan Timiran Dhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha <coughs> Let us begin. So in the 21st and 22nd verses, these two are combined here. So here Arjuna says, Arjuna Uvacha, Senayor Ubhayor Madhye. Try to understand the meaning when I say, at least if you know some bit of Hindi or Sanskrit. Senayor Ubhayor Madhye, Ratham Sthapaya Merchuta, Yavad Etan Nirikshaham, Yodha Kama Mavastitan. Kair Maya Sahayodhavam, Asmin Rana Samudhyame. So the translation for the 21st and 22nd verses are as follows. Arjuna said, O infallible one, who is infallible? Krishna himself, yes. What is the meaning of infallible? Infallible means achutya. Achutya. Chutta means one who can fall down into wrong activities, illicit activities, which is considered sinful as per the scriptures. And the living entity is known as chutta. Because he has the tendency to fall down. When I say living entity, I mean everybody in this world. Yes. That is why we see even good people doing blunders. But Lord Krishna is referred to as Achutya here. Which means he can never fall down. He can never do wrong. Whatever he does is good, is great. Therefore, Arjuna says, O infallible one, please draw my chariot between the two armies so that I may see those present here who desire to fight and with whom I must contend in this great trial of arms. So basically Arjuna is telling please take my chariot in between both the armies so that I can see who is there on my side, who is there on their side. So I will read the purport here. Although Lord Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy he was engaged in the service of his friend who is his friend Arjuna. What's written here? Although he is God, but out of his causeless mercy. What is the meaning of causeless mercy? Causeless mercy simply means that that mercy which is given to somebody who doesn't deserve. <laughs> and there is no reason, there is no obligation behind the mercy. For example, Krishna could have not been the charioteer of Arjuna. Nobody could have forced him and there was no reason for him to be. But he still was because of his causeless mercy. Causeless means there is no cause of the mercy. Mercy is what? Blessing. Although Lord Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, out of his causeless mercy, he was engaged in the service of his friend. Service means, as in Hindi we say, seva. So, how he was serving his friend? By being his charioteer, of course, yes. Charioteer means one who pulls the uh, horses and who drives the chariot. That is the meaning of the word charioteer. He is known as Sarathi. Rathi is the one who is in charge of the chariot. And charioteer is the Sarathi, who is the driver. Now, it's spoken about Lord Krishna here. He never fails in his affection for his devotees and thus he is addressed herein as infallible. Infallible means achutya, as I said earlier. 
he never fails in his affection for his devotees that's written here see very nice it is as charioteer he had to carry out the orders of arjuna see arjuna is ordering him and since he did not hesitate to do so he is addressed as infallible here it also means that krishna is so humble that he is not even considering that i am being the charioteer here i am taking orders from somebody <laughs> because for chatriyas to be the post of a charioteer is considered to be very humiliating it's very demeaning to their status but krishna did it effortlessly that's what is mentioned here and because he doesn't have any false conceptions of who he is that is why also he is known as infallible because if you tell a normal person that if you tell another king that please go and be his charioteer the king will be like oh i am a king how can i do this i am a chatriya i have this i have that but krishna didn't have any of them even after having everything yes although he had accepted the position of a charioteer for his devotee his supreme position was not challenged that means even if he was the charioteer behaving like a charioteer he was he is and he will always be the supreme personality of god his position was not challenged that means there was no argument on his position that nobody can ask oh maybe he is actually a charioteer or what no no he is god himself in all circumstances he is the supreme personality of god and rishikesha the lord of the total senses about which we discussed earlier in the earlier verses how he is known as rishikesha rishik is referring to the senses the eyes ears mouth and all the senses which we have skin also and then he is the lord of the total senses total senses means he is the one from whom all our senses have been derived from whom we have got our senses he is the original master so rishik means senses and isha means controller so he is the controller of our senses actually therefore unless he desires that we use our senses we cannot use them <laughs> that happens sometimes right we may get into an accident and break our leg and we are like oh my god this leg was mine why am i not able to use it but unless krishna wants it you cannot use it there you go the relationship between the lord and his servitor is very sweet and transcendental who is his servitor here arjuna is very sweet and transcendental because there is no element of selfishness in that there is only selflessness <laughs> there's only beauty here beauty doesn't mean physical beauty there is only given uh, give there's no give and take in the material realm you will see relationships have this motto give take give take give take but in case of spirituality for highly spiritual beings and god himself they only want to give they never want to take that is the ultimate verdict of the scriptures that you are only happy when you are giving that is why it is said the relationship between the lord and his servitor is very sweet and transcendental transcendental means it is beyond this material realm it is not confined to the mundane laws of this world yes that is why it is known as transcendental transcendental means that which transcends the material laws that which goes beyond what we see here in this mundane realm beyond time and space actually so it is sweet as well as transcendental <laughs> the servitor is always ready to render service to the lord see hanuman is the perfect example of servitor is always ready whatever lord ram said he just did it without without thinking oh maybe can i do this or maybe can i not do this he knew if lord ram blesses there's nothing that i cannot do the servitor is always ready to render service to the lord and similarly the lord is always seeking an opportunity to render some service to the devotee so here it is said that the servitor always wants to serve god and god also is searching for opportunities to serve his servitor and we see lord krishna here he is not missing any opportunity to serve arjuna who is his great devotee or perhaps the greatest in the mahabharat and therefore it is said that 
both are seeking opportunities to render service to each other therefore i said both are only wanting to give nobody is wanting to take here everybody in this world will only give you unless you give them right <laughs> there is actually unfortunately no selflessness in this material world only the mother's love is considered to be near about selfless which means that when the mother is doing things for the child she is not expecting anything but even within that also there is expectation unfortunately some level of expectation is there that is also not completely selfless if you do not believe me then if you are a male wait till you get married <laughs> i have my elder brother when he was not married then everything was very nice yeah yeah very nice <laughs> but the moment he got married things changed completely my mother's behavior towards him has changed <laughs> i don't know why but now my mother feels that he's a different person although i don't feel like that <laughs> he's still the same almost 99% but i don't know why my mother feels like that even i have tried talking with her in this terms but she says no 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 now he's married it's different i said what different he's the same person it's all your assumptions but no 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 now he's married <laughs> what marriage so her uh, the expectations will increase after you get married especially for a male so if you think that mother's love is completely selfless which does not mean it is not but it is not 100% person. 100% person self selflessness is only possible in spirituality it is not possible in the mundane realm that's the unfortunate scenario here and that's the great thing also because that should give us a boost to go towards spirituality otherwise we would have stuck here yes thinking yes i will get 100% i will give 100% but that never happens unfortunately in this world any relationship is not selfless it is only till the time you are satisfying the needs of the person once you stop that that's it the relationship is over that is why boy and a girl when they fall in love and then something happens then afterwards when they see each other they will pretend as if oh we never saw each other right we never met <laughs> so here it's written that the the servitor is ready to render service and similarly the lord is also ready to he is also always seeking an opportunity to render some service to the devotee yes so there's a competition between the god and his devotees who can do more service so here krishna is giving offering service as a being the chariot therefore it's written here he takes greater pleasure in his pure devotees assuming the advantageous position of ordering him than he does in being the giver of orders i'll say this again he takes greater pleasure in rendering service some service to the devotee <coughs> and he takes greater pleasure in his pure devotees assuming the advantageous position of ordering him ordering him then he does in being the giver of orders basically what it's telling is that he prefers to take orders from others than giving orders in this material world everybody just wants to give orders right because your strength is measured by how many people are subordinate to you <laughs> if you can keep people under your control then people are that then you are assumed to be a very powerful person yes if you can subdue others especially if a woman can keep many men under her control then she is considered to be very strong and she is considered to be very powerful yes she can keep men under her control by using her beauty or sexuality or anything but here it's said that he takes greater pleasure in his pure devotees assuming the advantageous position of ordering him so he prefers taking orders from his pure devotee then he does in being the giver of orders so instead of giving orders he prefers to take orders see god is preferring to take orders it's miracle actually only god can do this <laughs> 
since he is master everyone is under his orders and no one is above him or above him uh, no one is above him to order him he is above all how can you order him but that's the situation here he likes to take orders since he is master everyone is under his orders and no one is above him to order him but still he takes orders see but when he finds that a pure devotee is ordering him he obtains transcendental pleasure although he is the infallible master in all circumstances beautiful it is but when he finds that a pure devotee is ordering him so for example when he was a charioteer of arjuna arjuna had to order him that go right go left so he derives great he obtains transcendental pleasure although he is the infallible master in all circumstances so just because arjuna is ordering him it doesn't mean arjuna is superior to him but he is accepting a superior uh, he is allowing arjuna out of transcendental pleasure and happiness to accept a superior role by which arjuna can order him so that is his greatness although he is the infallible master in all circumstances so whatever happens irrespective of that he is the infallible master in all circumstances as a pure devotee of the lord arjuna had no desire to fight with his cousins and brothers who are his cousins and brothers the kauravas duryodhan dushasan vikarna etc but he was forced to come on to the battlefield by the obstinacy of duryodhana who was never agreeable to any peaceful negotiation so basically this means that arjuna had no inner desire that okay i will fight i will kill everybody but they tried everything for the peace negotiations and even after that if it fails then what can you do he is forced to fight right and duryodhana did not agree to any peace negotiations out of his obstinacy see how foolish duryodhana was even when krishna went as a peace messenger he tried to capture krishna this foolish person <laughs> he tries to capture god also therefore he was very anxious to see who was the leading person present on the battlefield that is why he is telling that please take my chariot in between the armies although there was no question of a peace making endeavor on the battlefield he wanted to see them again and see how much they were bent upon demanding an unwanted war so basically it's said that arjuna knew that <laughs> the war has come to take place now and everybody has assembled and the conchels have been blown and that's why he is very sure that now nothing can happen because once the conchels are blown it's highly indicated that the war is going to start now yes therefore he wants to give a last uh, watch as the word nidikshan is used there he wants to go for a last assessment of what is going on who is there on my side who is there on their side and that is why he says please take my chariot in between and in the future verses we will discuss what happens to arjuna the paralysis which he undergoes once he sees the armies of the kurus especially when he sees bhishma and drona because they are his most uh, venerated and loved and respected seniors elders of the family dronacharya is his guru and arjuna is his most favorite disciple and bhishma is his grandfather almost <laughs> so therefore he becomes very affectionate he becomes very compassionate when he sees them therefore arjuna is telling sena yo dubhayo madhye please take my chariot in between so that i can see them all right and we will discuss what is the inner meaning of this in the later verses because he will undergo paralysis so we will see should we do this or not and we will also see what is the actual meaning when arjuna says take my chariot in between the armies it is not just a, a contextual meaning it has a very deep meaning so we will see should we do that which arjuna did is it good to tell that please take my chariot in between yes we will come to know about that until next time wish you good luck Bye bye see you